report. And uh, from the coast, let's now come back to Nairobi and go straight to the ongoing ICPD 25 conference. At the moment, Susan Papp, the Managing Director, Policy and Advocacy of Women Deliver, is making her speech. Let's listen in. Earlier this week, and he made a commitment, a bold commitment, to end female genital mutilation by 2022, ahead of his original target of 2030. He also committed to end child marriage, to taking action against climate change, and to making primary and secondary education compulsory for all children, regardless of gender. I think it's time that we give commitments like that some celebratory applause. Yesterday, Women Deliver met with Cabinet Secretary Kobia of the Kenyan government to learn exactly how the Kenyan government is taking these promises and turning them into action. It's our role, after all, as civil society to keep watching. In addition to political commitments, we also know that financial investments are required. And at that same Women Deliver conference, we were so proud to see that Prime Minister Trudeau announced that he and the government of Canada would use their power to invest $1.4 billion annually to support girls' and women's health around the world. And this includes an additional $300 a year dedicated specifically to sexual and reproductive health and rights, including access to safe abortion. And right now in Nairobi, at the ICPD summit, countries are standing up and making bold commitments of their own. Earlier today, we heard about the UK, um, what they said yesterday. South Africa committed to achieving universal health coverage and expanding primary health services, and Vietnam committed to delivering comprehensive sexuality education so that young people are able to make informed choices about their sexual health and rights. These commitments should be an inspiration to all of us and a way for us to learn about how we can use our power to increase political, programmatic, and financial investments in girls and women. So today, I urge you to do the following. Use your power to guarantee universal access to sexual and reproductive health services, including modern contraception and safe abortion, as part of an integrated package of primary health care services and universal health coverage. Two, use your power to tackle barriers to sexual and reproductive health services and information and supplies, including for young people, regardless of sexual orientation and sexual identity. Three, use your power to liberalize abortion laws and provide safe abortion and post-abortion care. Four, use your power to establish comprehensive sexuality education in schools. And finally, use your power to guarantee SRHR for all, including marginalized groups living with disabilities, LGBTQI communities, sex workers, indigenous people, adolescents, and young people. There is so much power in this room. We just have to harness it. Look around you. Collectively, we have the power to catalyze progress for girls and women, to invest in and integrate sexual and reproductive health in programming, to push back against the pushback, and to build a more gender equal world. So my final question to you today is how will you use your power for good? Thank you. All right, but still, Kenya is today joining the rest of the world in marking the World Diabetes Day. Various Indeed. leaders are addressing delegates attending the celebrations here in Nairobi. Let's listen in. And we know that the battle will be won if we put the patient at the center of our care. So involve the patient in decision making. Your HbA1c is not a target. You're on multiple medication. Um, complications are already showing. Your eyes have got affected. Can we now add in insulin? Can we do this? Have a in interactive approach with your patient and involve all the other people. If there's dental problems, you, those, you saw the slides, those of you who are punctual, about how the gums can be affected, how the eyes can be affected. Refer when it's time to refer and explain to your patient why you're referring them to somebody. We know that the decision-making cycle is very important. Uh, Chantel Matthews showed this at uh, one of the EASD symposia. But this tells you about how di diabetes is so dynamic. At every visit, you are evaluating the patient, their control, even their mental status. 
their emotional status, their well-being. And this is so important. Now the patient is very much involved in decision-making and in how their care is being, uh, you know, you, you're cutting your cloth according to your, your coat according to your cloth, but the patient is at the center of decision-making. And that has really changed, revolutionized the way we are looking after patients. You are all familiar with these guidelines. I'm not here to give a lecture on diabetes today, but these guidelines have really changed the way we look after diabetes. We no longer start with one medicine and then go on and on and on. We are very dynamic in the way we changed and we're very proactive as practitioners. And I think uh, there, uh, the, I looked at the, at the IDF training uh, with my colleagues uh, from IDF and with ministry, and we tropicalized them as well, and with our Zanofi colleagues. So the doctors now are all on the same page as how the patients should be managed the best way possible. But patients will be patients. They're human beings. Sometimes they want to go to a party or a wedding. Sometimes they feel side effects of the medication. Uh, sometimes exercise is a problem. If it's raining, they'll say, oh, I can't exercise. But of course, you can exercise in your house. You can exercise with a chair. You don't need a treadmill to exercise. So we have to give them those suggestions. Patients might not think for themselves. So adherence, compliance, illness, stress, so many issues come into play where a patient is involved. And every patient is different. Even twins are different. Sometimes I look after twins with diabetes, and I find they're totally different. So we have to individualize our therapy. There will always be barriers to getting your glycemic control. So make sure that you address those barriers. Don't be afraid of barriers. When you're afraid of something, it will always haunt you. So just face it full on. Uh, monitoring is important, the glucometers. Something can be complex, but if we understand it and explain it to our patients and our healthcare practitioners, it becomes simple. We have to involve and we have to talk to each other. And multidisciplinary care. Diabetes is all about multidisciplinary care. It's not a one man or a one woman show. And that is why even today I'm happy that we have people from all different cadres in the room today. Diabetes Day is about involving everybody. We don't need to work in our own closed you know, uh, units. We need to embrace each other. We need to make the blue circle wider. And we can win if we are all in a partnership together. So really, we also need to take in things like you know, cultural sensitivity, if it's Ramadan or if it's somebody's cultural beliefs or the foods that they like eating. So it's not about don't, don't, don't. It's about how can we make it better for you. It's the language you use with your patient or their families or whoever it is. Capacity building is very important, and this is happening with the ministry. This is a slide I borrowed from Zachary, what the ministry is doing for capacity building. So the next slide is my slide on capacity building. Capacity building is, is something that's infinite. There is no end to capacity building. So we can all do it in our own, wherever we are based. But many people tell me sometimes that you guys are joking, diabetes organizations. There are just too many. We don't even know who to keep, keep up with. But we can have strength in diversity. If we are doing something here, if Diabetes Kenya is advocating for the patients, DMI can be doing something else somewhere else. Ministry can be doing something somewhere else. Diabetes Defeat Kenya Association is doing a wonderful job with motivating patients. Let them do... All right, that is the Kenya Diabetes Association uh, chairperson, Kitida Achan.